Check, check. Hello, hello, I see emojis flying, so we've got somebody here already. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Wednesday, and I am Montana Max. Joining me, as always, my partner in food, love, and life is the one and only Kansas City Jen. Say hello, Jen. Hi, everybody. Hello. So we have had some crazy weather is uh, par for the course around the country today, so we'll be showing you that in just a minute. And on these snowy winter days, a little comfort food goes a long way. So we are back again uh, today uh, with an amazingly easy recipe designed to show you how to up your flavor game, make you feel a little warm from the inside out. And that's some of our favorite ingredients. That's right. Tomato, bacon, and cheese, right? I should have did uh, tomato, cheese, bacon because we're taking care of business with this easy, easy recipe, we're gonna show you a couple easy hacks, a couple easy ways to up your flavor game, and it's all gonna be fun, because after all, that's why we're here. Uh, food brings us all together, and we wanna have fun doing it. Oven is preheated. We're actually gonna be cooking this uh, two different ways. Normally, we'd be cooking our uh, bacon outside, but let's go ahead and give you the quick tour of the kitchen. Of course, we've got the main screen right here is we're coming to you live from the Ozark Mountains. How cool is that, right? In our home kitchen here. Uh, and we've got our overhead cam right there to give you the bird's eye perspective. And we can, of course, flip that over and take you right to the stove so you got something to see when it's cooking away there. And you're saying to yourself, Montana Max, that's so tiny. It's so small in the corner. Well, don't worry. We've got you covered because we can flip you right over there and give you that nice side perspective or once again the overhead view right there but don't worry see i'm tiny now now down in the corner there showing you how it is now like i said normally we smoke our bacon outside that is par for the course that's going to be the word of the day par for the course i have a feeling i'm going to reiterate that one several times but uh we do a lot of cooking outside right but not today and that is why uh, we're not going to trudge through the snow, but you can see it's a beautiful, uh, very Norman Rockwell barbecue scene that we've got going on outside there today. Uh, and it'll so be gone. Pretty. So pretty. Very pretty yeah. indeed. Uh, so we're going to be cooking our bacon inside. We're going to start on that momentarily here. Uh, and other fun things on the way, right? That's right. Also, if you don't, Follow us on our Facebook, our, our Instagram, uh, YouTube, things like that. Uh, if you pop on over and everywhere is Montana Max BBQ and give us a, a quick follow there, it should change our lights too. That is, uh, I got that connected. So if that happens, we should be able to see that as well. And the one other thing is I'm going to change our Twitter name right now. Bam, just did it. To let everyone in the Twitterverse know that we are live on Kitsch.com, the food network for a new generation. All right, we might as well hop into it. I'm hungry. Jen's hungry. We're all hungry. And if anyone wants to join the chef's table, you can join just by clicking on that join now, and then we can see you and we can talk to you live. That's right. Right over there, you can get your smiling pearly whites right on the stream with us. Uh, first come, first serve on the chef's table. And now we have live interactive scrolling chat. All sorts of fun ways to interact here, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and pull our bacon out of the fridge here and get ready to rock and roll. All right. We're going to need to heat up our pan here with a nice medium to medium low heat. So we're going to go ahead and get that started here. Uh, and while we're waiting for our pan to heat up over there, by the way, new for 2023, we have started composting. So we're not going to be wasting our scraps. We're going to turn that into beautiful compost for our outdoor garden. So we've got that. We're taking care of the planet a little bit and reducing waste and turning it into something awesome. So we've got that going. 
And we're going to have a little bit of uh, vegetable refuse uh, that won't make its way to the trash and it will go into our compost bin. So I've got that all set up here as well. All right, let's go ahead and open our package of bacon here. And I'm going to just try to do this nice and easily. We've got a large skillet back here. There's Jen joining us on the chef's table all the way across the room. Look at that. There I am. There you are. If you want to join Jen on the chef's table, don't be bashful. Hop right in. We love making new friends. All right. So we're going to get... <coughs> Excuse me. I got a little, little cough there. I'm going to grab a drink of water so I don't continue to, to do that. We don't really need uh, oil in our pan when we're cooking bacon, all right? Uh, there's enough inherent fat in bacon that it's not going to stick to your pan, especially if you're using a nice non-stick pan like we've got going on here. Uh, so we're going to be doing it just laying it in the pan. Now, this is the tip that blows people's mind all the time, right? Is bacon, well, absolutely beautiful and delicious in its own right, can benefit from layers of flavor. And this is one of our tricks that we use that people all the time are like, Oh my gosh, I had no idea. I had no idea bacon could be better, but it can. It can, and it very easily can by seasoning our bacon, right? We're going to be using right here. I'm going to flip this. Uh, let's go ahead and take it over there, and I'll lift her on up here. Montana Max's last best. This is our sweeter seasoning right here, our barbecue rub and seasoning available on MontanaMaxBBQ.com. Uh, we're going to be using that to season up our bacon in the pan here. So let's go ahead, flip this back over. We can lay our bacon in the pan. It's not quite up to temperature yet, but that's all right. We want low, uh, low, medium, low heat because we don't want to get that bacon to burn, especially since we're using seasoning. And we want it to have a nice shape to it as well. You cook it too hot, too fast, it's going to crisp up. It's going to bend up and, you know. It's not going to be all nice and beautiful. And that's part of the part of the goal here, right, is presentation is a big thing. Let's go ahead and flip the stove cam over uh, and give you that full perspective as we're laying this bacon in here. We might want to do this in two batches. I'm going to go ahead and probably pull out uh, a paper plate, put a little paper towel on it so we can get that excess uh, grease off the bacon. But this is some really nice uh, fat, thick cut bacon that we're doing here. Okay. Highly advised when you're doing sandwiches to go with the thick cut, the thin stuff will work, but, uh, the thick cut's going to be a much better option. Uh, have more staying power when we're doing sandwiches, right? And this is uh open face sandwich that we're going to be doing. So more of a brunch style on that one. And then also we're going to do it in a skillet as well and do a traditional uh, sandwich style on this as well. Right, babe? Yes. And I'm going to try to fit four in there. Look at that. That's a that's a 12 inch pan. So we've got some really nice full size bacon uh, rocking and rolling in the pan there. And by the way, if you have any questions, right? Any questions about what we're doing today or any cooking questions at all, Jen and I are professional competition cooks. We teach in-person classes. Uh, so you have questions about anything at all, don't hesitate to get in that chat or join Jen there on the chef's table, and we would be happy to help you out on your cooking adventure. Also, just want to make a note that Max uh, can also teach how to make homemade bacon. Yes, we've done that before yeah. on uh, Twitch streams. Uh, we'll have to bring that back one of these days. That's mm -hmm. one of our most requested things is actually making our own bacon, right? right? And if you make homemade bacon, you'll be wondering why you ate store brand the whole time so because it's a whole uh, different world. All right, before the pan gets too hot here, we're gonna go ahead and take our last best barbecue rub and seasoning uh, and just do a nice light, okay? We don't need to get too heavy handed. We're not trying to create a barbecue bark here. And we're just gonna do a nice light season there. When we flip it over, we'll go ahead and season the other side. Doesn't take very much. We're going to go ahead, get that up, get that cooking. Uh, let's grab out a little paper plate here out of the cupboard. Try 
trying to do that all nice and gingerly. And we'll get a little piece of paper towel here to soak up any of that excess grease when we're ready to go. So we'll just set that back there. Well, our bacon is cooking, all right? Let's bring it back over, bam, in the corner there. Uh, we've got some beautiful ingredients here. Now, when it comes to doing sandwiches, whether it's open face, closed face, is that the other side, closed face? I don't know if that's a... Did I just make that up? I think so. That's all right. Uh, closed face sandwich, we're making it a thing here today. Okay. Uh, a or traditional... regular, traditional. Traditional sandwich <laughs> style that has a top and a bottom. Uh <laughs> Uh, bread is important, right? And when we, we, we do burgers, we talk about this a lot too, is the bun, the bread. That's a critical part of building your layers of flavor here. And we have some beautiful sourdough. And I'm actually going to grab out too, because you can't have a good sandwich without some beautiful cheese, right? So we've got some sliced cheddar cheese here. Uh, very easy to vary this recipe up. Anything, if you think it's sounds good, add it. You don't like it, remove it. That's half the fun, right? So we've got some cheddar, but you know, any sort of nice melting cheese, or you wanted to use Swiss or Gruyere or anything along those lines, by all means, feel free to mix it up. But we're going to be using uh, cheddar here. And then we've got, of course, beautiful slicing tomato. That is looking lovely. We've got some onion, which we're going to hop into. Uh, we've got some fresh spinach, and we're going to garnish with some parsley. We were going to use basil on this. Basil pairs obviously very well with tomato, but unfortunately uh, not able to acquire some in the store this week that was up to standard. Very wilty looking. Uh, so on a sidetrack with that as well, uh, we will be getting our garden, which is our indoor hydroponic garden, G-A-R-D-Y-N, uh, in full effect here. So we'll be actually growing our own produce inside as well while we're in these winter seasons. All right. So we've got all this. We've got things to build. We've got things to transpire. We've got our bacon in. Let's go ahead now and prep our onion. We've got a beautiful little onion here. We don't need a lot. And we are actually going to uh, mince this up, dice it up finely. There's our overhead perspective. And once again, our Nakiri knife is making its kitsch appearance of the day and here we go basic onion cutting right if you have onions and they make you cry one of our tips that we always tell people is throw that onion into the fridge or freezer for about 10 minutes before you cut it because what's actually making you cry is the aromatics that release from the onion when we start slicing into it okay uh that helps condense those particles so they don't fly into the air as much. And you'll notice that you have less tears when cutting an onion. Now, we didn't do that with this onion today, as I just realized while giving that tip. So if I get a little teary-eyed, it's just because it's going to be so delicious. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. And we've got, it's round, it spins. We're going to go ahead and split it in two. So we have a nice flat surface to work with. This has already been peeled. We're going to take off that and leaving the root end on, okay? That's a big thing uh, people do that creates issues is they remove both the tip and the root, and then the onion starts to fall apart, okay? And let's go ahead and go over. We're going to keep that on, and it's going to help keep our onion together here. We're going to make some nice, even slices, relatively small here, but you see how we're, we're fanning apart, but it's not falling all over the place, okay? Luna is out of here, one of our pups. She's like, that is annoying. I'm trying to take a nap on this fine winter day. Let's just start with half of one. Since it's just Jen and I, I don't want to end up doing too much here. And then we're going to come back over the top. And we're starting to get a sizzle back there. I can hear it. And we're going to slice that down, uh, 50 degree angle there. And there we go. Easy, quick, nice, lovely, small, uniform, diced onion ready to go okay so we're gonna go ahead and get that now tomato time okay we've got our lovely uh tomato there and for this i'm actually going to show you another little knife trick here if i can find the blade that i require this will work just fine now actually people often just call these bread knives, but this is a serrated blade. It's actually your sharpest knife in your knife block. 
So when it comes to not only cutting bread, but also cutting things like tomatoes, a uh, super effective knife for doing that, okay? So we're gonna go ahead, flip this on its side, and we're gonna get some nice, healthy uh, slices here. You can pop this out. I usually don't take time to do that. I'll usually just cut right through. You see how nice and easy that serrated blade goes right through that? Super lovely. And that is looking real nice. Look at the color, the sheen. Woo. Oh, and that onion's starting to get to me. For this time of year, too. For this not time a, of year, absolutely. We're going to cut some nice slices here. Oh, dear, that onion is getting at me. So nice, about quarter inch thick slices. I might pull that other uh, tomato out here real quickly. Let's go ahead and do that. Always, 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 no matter what, no matter what store you're getting your produce from, make sure to give it a quick rinse in the sink and clean off that veggie. We don't want any of those ickies. And we've got a grease pan here right over on this side of me. That's going to be going into the oven. Uh, bacon's starting to sizzle. So we got to get moving with a little bit of a purpose here. So we slice this down. So if you have dull knives at home uh, and you're having trouble and you're squishing your tomatoes, go grab your serrated blade, okay? The other thing I will tell you about a serrated blade uh, that you just don't want to make the mistake of doing is a lot of us have the pull-through knife sharpeners in our drawers to keep our, our knife sharp, right? There's, no, there's nothing wrong with that. As much as I'd love to have you sitting there with a, with a wet stone working your knives away, uh, ain't nobody got time for that, right? So what we're, uh, we use those pull-throughs a lot of the time. Never, never, never take a serrated blade. Those have to be sharpened in a completely different fashion. So uh, just a quick tip, never do those in a pull-through. Bacon, cooking away. Let's go ahead and start prepping our bread. Now, this has become more popular in recent years, but typically when making like a grilled cheese type of sandwich, the classic thing has always been to butter your bread. Now, if you've never done it, or if you've seen it and you're like, I have to try it, using wonderful mayo instead of butter creates a much more uniform crust when we do our bread, and it also adds a little bit of flavor. So we've got uh, sourdough here. Look at these beautiful slices of sourdough that I've got right down in front of me here. And we are only going to do one side of it, the side that's going to go down on the pan. And we're going to use the cutest little spatula. And we are just going to do a nice light layer here. I'll flip this back over and show you. I'll lift it up to the camera so you can kind of see uh, the quantity of mayo that I'm using here. And we do want to get it edge to edge here, right? All the way uh, to the crust side of things. So we're going to spoon it on and then we're going to use the back to, to spread it evenly. It's all about consistently. Consistent. <laughs> back to Daffy Duckland, consistency when we're doing these. Just a little more, just a dabble, do ya? That is just about where we want her. All right. And the nice thing using a spatula too is we can actually take take that, run it over the top, and remove any excess so we don't have big clumps. We want it nice, even all the way across. Let's flip it back over. You can almost see. Uh, the texture of the bread underneath the mayo there. That's how lightly we want to do it, okay? And then we're going to go on a grease pan. It's a nonstick pan, but we still want to spray a little oil on there. And we're going to go ahead and do mayo side down on that. Let's go ahead, pop, pop on here to our next piece. And I'll try to move a little bit quicker here. Bacon's starting to smell delicious, and I actually need to pop that fan on. So let's multitask. That's one of the reasons why we love smoking bacon is not only that extra added layer of uh, wood flavor to it, but a lot of people don't like cooking bacon inside in their house because then their house smells like bacon all day. Uh, I don't have an issue with that, but some people do. So there we go. 
just nice and easy. And like I said, we're going to do this uh, twofold today. We're going to do the open face and the closed face, which is the new Montana Maxism way to do a sandwich. And once again, mayo side down, and we can start building on top of this, okay? And I think this tray, I'm going to have room. This is really nice sized bread here on this sourdough loaf. We love using sourdough for these type of grilled cheese sandwiches because inherently with sourdough, there's a lot more air in it, okay? And so what that is going to do is when this starts to crisp up in that air, we're going to have a really nice chewy but crunchy texture at the same time. It creates interesting, uh, an interesting mouthfeel, for lack of a better term. And when we're building our layers of flavor, we need to be thinking also about uh, building layers of, of texture and temperature at the same time, okay? So there we go. We've got that all the way through there. Let's go ahead, mayo side down. And I'm not going to press the envelope with putting, trying to put four on there. I think that's a nice even spread. Don't you, dear? That's, that's how I'm going to fit it. That's how I'm going to do it. That's how I'm going to roll it. All right. Time for cheese. Okay. Time for cheese. And this is very easy. We're just going to be able to take, we can overlap a little bit or you can cut it down. Let's go ahead. Let's try to make these really nice and consistent across the board here. I'm just going to fold that. Look at that. Just a slight little overlap so we don't have a gap here. We're going to lay our cheese down. Just like so. All right, about time to flip that bacon here. So we're going to get this last piece of cheese taken care of. Then we'll go check on our bacon on the stove here. There we go. Let's flip it on over to stove cam. Look at that. It's coming along nicely. It does smell good in here. We're going to go ahead and flip these uh, bad boys over. Just like so. And now when it comes to cooking bacon, we want to make sure that all the fat gets rendered, okay? If that fat is still white, it has not rendered. Make sure we're right on the center of the pan there. But it's coming along good. It's coming along real good. Now, remember here, we're going to talk about this a little bit as we go, all right, uh, that this is going to go into the oven. So it's going to continue to cook, all right? So we want to be careful here. The big, the big key to success here is not overcooking. People's biggest downfall in the kitchen is overcooking. 90% of the time. When things don't turn out, it's because it's overcooked, all right? So we want to make sure that we come in just a little bit under, just air on the side of a little bit under. You can always cook longer after it's been cooked. It's really, really difficult to come back and undo that process, all right? So let's come back now, and we're just going to add that nice, light dusting, right, of seasoning to season up our bacon there. And this is coming along really nice, really beautiful. Digging it. I am digging it. Let's go back to the main screen. Hi, everybody. All right. We can start building our layers here, and then we can start actually working on our uh, closed face sandwich. We've got a fun pan, right? Everyone loves a fun pan that we're going to be doing that on. Uh, but let's start building these. We can get these into the oven here. Pretty darn quickly, that bacon's coming along really nicely. So let's start building layers of flavor, shall we? And I, I'm usually one to uh, miss something here. So we'll have Jen jump in. She'll be like, up, oh! And I'll be like, thank you, babe. Teamwork. All right, there we go. We got the nice overhead. And we're going to lay down uh, some beautiful spinach leaves here. And start doling these out. I like to spread them out, spread them open, get as much surface area that we can. A little extra nutritional value, a little extra color. You could always 
do this with the fresh basil. If you could yes. It. And once again, we were originally going to do this recipe with basil. Uh, I wouldn't add nearly as much basil. Right. Maybe not. Uh, but, you know, for people watching at home or at work, if you're not working, good for you. It's a snow day. I Tell Montana Max, tell your boss. He said, it's a snow day. I'm fine. Uh, but if you use basil, you want to use just uh, probably four leaves to cover. We're not going to build it up as much. Spinach doesn't have as much inherent flavor as basil, especially fresh basil. Uh, so just FYI, you don't want to over basil it, okay? But yes, got to use what's good and what's in season, make adjustments, right? That's so much of, of life anyways, making adjustments, being ready to go. Oven is preheated, by the way, 350 degrees, right? Which is pretty much standard for just turn it on and let it go, okay? There we go. Once again, thank you for joining us here on Kitch, the Food Network for the new generation, streaming at you. Such a wonderful platform to be involved in with so so many wonderful uh, culinary creators here. It's a real privilege. So thank you for taking some time out of your day and joining us here on Kitch. All right, there we go. Nice, relatively even layer. Just gonna pop back here real quickly. You see me in the corner. We don't want to overcook our bacon. We definitely don't want to undercook it. And I will get this actually onto the plate, hold it up to the camera here, and kind of give you uh, that bird's eye perspective again uh, so you can see kind of the doneness, right? The doneness of where, where we want to be. Just moving pieces around here in the pan here. There's just a couple small pieces that need to just render a little bit more. We don't want anyone taking a bite out of the sandwich and then the old like cartoon character, you got a big strip of unrendered fat pulling out, not a, uh, an attractive look for your sandwich, right, babe? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. All right, so now we can come into, uh, you can do this at any point. Actually, let's, let's just break that up. We got our onion here, rocking and rolling. You could even cook that in with the bacon if you wanted. You could. If if it's minced, though, you have to be very careful because it'll cook very, very, very quickly because bacon grease is extremely hot. That's the one word of caution there. You're doing it in strips, like onion strips. You got a little bit more grace, but you just want to be very careful because uh, it can burn your onion. Uh, but absolutely can be cooked in with your bacon grease if you want to cook that ahead of time. That is not an issue. Now, this is some beautiful looking bacon. Let's come on back to, there we go. Look at that. Is that not gorgeous? Mm, it smells good and looks Smells good. good. This will have a little bit better lighting to give you that perspective there. And we're just gonna go ahead. Now you can already see on the paper towel, excess grease, right? Uh, can be an enemy here to to our whole uh, sandwich. We don't want that soaking into our other things. So I'm just going to go ahead. But look at that. Look at how much inherent grease there. You know, bacon is a fatty meat. We already know that going into this, but we don't need that extra, extra grease in our sandwich. So we want to make sure that we uh, take care of that. But there we go. Fat's all rendered. Absolutely beautiful looking uh, cuts of bacon here. Then the nice thing too about this recipe, uh, your bacon can sit and cool down a little bit too. If you're doing it in batches, like we're gonna have to do in the pan here, uh, this we'll do a double bacon here and a couple single bacons. However you want to do it, however much bacon, if you want to pile it up to the heavens, by all means. Uh, but that bacon can cool down a little bit. I'm going to get some more strips back in the pan back here. Let's click this back over to the stove. Because once again, this is going into the oven to cook. So that bacon is going to reheat. Now, you don't want to leave it out, obviously, all day, okay? <laughs> Food safety, still important, right? But if it's sitting there, you're cooking it in batches. Uh, not a big deal to do that, okay? 
And that extra color from the seasoning is absolutely wonderful as well. Let's go ahead and get a few more slices in. I always like to make a few extra slices just so Jen has some snack and bacon. <laughs> That should be plenty right there. We'll just do three more. And let's go ahead and wash our hands. Then we'll come back, drop a little seasoning, and get on our way. That last best seasoning is my favorite for bacon. It's, it's just that sweeter side of things pairs with the savoriness of bacon. That last best pairs uh, really excellent with all sorts of pork products, but... Uh, a lot of our customers have actually talked about this being their secret weapon in meatballs and burgers, all right? Fabulous on ribs and pork and all kinds of stuff, but if you're looking for something to up your flavor game also in your hamburgers. Yeah, woo -woo. excellent. Excellent day, says Kansas City Jen, and she's right, as usual. Killing it, babe. Uh, you're killing it. All right. Flip it back over here, continue our process, all right? So we've got our bacon down, looking really nice there. Let's go ahead and come back over now with some of this nice, thick-cut tomato slices. Just like so. There we go. Looking wonderful so far, don't you think, sweetheart? Mm hmm Okay, and now yeah. we're going to come back with top with a little bit of onion. We don't need a lot of it, and it will cook up in the oven. Just a little bit. Look at that. Adds a little color, a little, little another layer of flavor. And if you're sitting there at home and you're thinking it, you can layer this however you like. Okay? I just think this is, for presentation purposes, I really like the, the way that this is going to shake out here. There we go. We'll save a little bit for the closed face sandwich as well. There we go. What now? Mountain magic. Mountain magic. Don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I do. So we're going to come over the top here with our all-purpose mountain magic seasoning. You've seen us use this uh, on our last uh, couple episodes on Kitsch here over the last two days, and we use it a lot. It was upside down, but there. Turn, turn, there. Da -da -da, yeah. Gratuitous pride and shot. Uh, you'll see us use it a lot because, I mean, it's your really your garlicky onion uh, go-to for everything. And we're just going to very lightly. Now, there's a couple ways to use shaker bottles. Usually, when I'm doing uh, big cuts of meat, it's the wrist action. When I'm doing more delicate seasoning, like this is just a finishing, finishing uh, spice. I'm just going to take it and tap the top of the bottle here. Hello, is there flavor home? Because we don't want to overdo it. We just want a little bit here. Is where we use two of our seasonings here today. And this is just kind of a finishing. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. All right. Here we go. Tappa tappa tappa. Just like so. Nice and light. That'll help get that tomato uh, a little extra kick, a little extra pizzazz, right? And that's it. What about a little bit of the dried basil? Oh, I almost forgot. That's right. Since we couldn't get the fresh basil. Thank you, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. We have some beautiful dried basil here. This basil, we actually created ourselves from our garden. We dehydrated our own basil leaves. Uh, very easy to do. You can do it with a dehydrator or you can do it in an oven uh, on very low. It's kind of like making jerky, but with plants. Plant jerky. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Jen's over there just going, this, you are a horrible person. Uh, so <laughs> we're going to go ahead now and just same concept and just do a nice little tap here. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the reminder there, sweetums. Mm -hmm. Once again, oven preheated to 350 degrees. And that's looking pretty darn good, if I do say so myself. And let's come on back. 350 degrees, middle rack, 10 minutes roughly, all right? Now, recipes. Recipes are always good, but always should be used as a rule of thumb, okay? So if you're like, Montana Max said 10 minutes, and then you wait 10 minutes and it comes out, you need to check your stuff a little early, right? So 
once again, the theme here, middle rack, in we go, middle of the oven. Now watch this, okay? Pro tip, 10 minute cook time. Alexa, set timer for eight minutes. We wanna make sure we check it before then. It could take a little longer, it could finish a little early. Recipes are always a general guideline. So much affects our cooking time, whether you're inside or outside, and that has to do with elevation, humidity, barometric pressure, all that kind of stuff. And I'm not saying it's going to sway you 15, 20 minutes on each side, but it can sway you up to a minute, two minutes, uh, given different circumstances with what the recipe actually states. So we always err on the side of under. Okay, bacon coming along here, looking good. Flip that over. Now, remember, uh, we do have some bacon grease in that pan, so we got to watch this a little bit closer because it will cook faster than the first First batch, we got that hot bacon grease from the first batch in there. And we're going to come back in and season up. Also, when you have that bacon grease, remember, it's very, very hot. So we don't want to burn our seasoning. That's why that medium-low heat is very important. Let's come back. Drop a little sprinkle, sprinkle. There we go. And life is good. All right. Time to work on our closed face sandwich here. So we're going to get this all prepped up. I've got the bottoms of the tomatoes here, which I'm going to actually just get that bottom off. Just like so. So we're ready to, ready to layer that and have it lay nice and flat, nice and easy. There we go. Looking good, looking good. All right, same process here. Uh, we are gonna use mayo. I've got extra slice of bread. We're gonna move that over. And then we'll flip our pan onto the heat, show you our fun pan, which is gonna give you that grilling effect inside. But let's go ahead and get things together here. Time to mayo up. We're just going to get that on there. Spread that thusly. Would you even possibly do a seasoned mayo on this? You definitely could. You definitely could do. Uh, I suppose you would have to be extra careful not to burn this. You do, because when we're doing this type of sandwich, of course, it's, it's going to be cooking pretty hot. So you want to be careful. If you wanted to do a light seasoning, absolutely could do that. Uh, or an aioli type situation, right? So if you did like a garlic mayo, that could be really good, or a lemon garlic mayo. Uh, but it's all about balance and it's all about uh, temperature control as well to make sure it turns out because we definitely don't want burn components. We want that beautiful crust, which the mayo is gonna provide for us with that flavor. We just don't wanna overdo it. So if you do season your mayo, which we've done that kind of thing before when we've done buns and toasted buns and all kinds of stuff, uh, we just wanna be real conscientious of a little bit goes a long way when you do that. We're building layers of flavor, not the main flavor, okay? Once again, we're just gonna be doing the outside of the sandwich, so we've got that ready to go. We're just gonna get our bacon to finish up here, which it is pretty darn close already. Just a few more moments on that. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat on so we can get this other pan Warmed up, ready to go here, is we are taking care of business with tomato, cheese, and bacon. TCB. Of course, I thought of that awesome correlation to the music after I already named it TBC. <laughs> My bad. All right, we've got our onion. We've got our tomato. Let's go ahead. We'll start building up on one side here. And we got our cheese right here. I've got extra cheese right there. So let's just use that up. Another option perhaps would be to add some of our uh, beer mustard in. Yes, you could absolutely add uh, your favorite mustard. We, use, we have a cowboy crafted beer mustard, which is a whole grain stout ale infused <laughs> mustard. Uh-oh. Oh boy, somebody's excited. The little one is excited. Do we have a delivery or a guest? We are in our home studio, so. Yes. 
We do. We do. Delivery. That's good. Well, welcome to live TV, folks. Let's go ahead and get that spinach on here. Mayo side is down here as we are constructing this. We can flip this back over. Just like so. Using all that beautiful spinach that we've got. Check on that bacon. Just about done here. Just about. I'd rather take the extra few moments to make sure the bacon is done correctly than just rush through it and either put overcooked or raw bacon on there. In our timer, we're already down. We're already down to two minutes and 20 seconds here for our oven. So we are coming along real nicely here, okay? So we're going to get that bacon just to finish up here. Let's go ahead. Drop in our diced onion. Just like so. Let's go ahead and put that right there. There, now you can see that. And we're moments away. We're moments away. Let's see. Uh, let's get a nice plate out too, so we're ready to go for that. This one or the green one? Thumbs up. Yeah. Thumbs up from Jen. I think the other might be a little small. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. We are super excited because we just got some new plating plates. So lots of fun options. Ooh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. When you compete professionally, you, you think of everything, not only the food, but down to the plate that it's served on. Check that beauty out. Woo! <laughs> you excited? I am. Mm-hmm. All right. smells making me hungry. Well, you're just about there, sweetheart. And this bacon is just about there too. I'm just, this one side just needs to render just a little bit more. Our timer, uh, 45 seconds to go ahead and check this. We're going to add this bacon. We're going to flip our pans. We're going to do the open face uh, ones coming out. And then we'll do the closed face ones. We'll dress them, uh, answer any questions. If anybody's here hanging out with us, if you are, thank you so much once again for being here. And then Kansas City Jen, your tomato bacon cheese dreams will become a tomato bacon cheese reality oh boy oh boy <laughs> all right let's go ahead pull these out here that one needs a moment so i'm just gonna let that one go but that's not too shabby we'll give that just a second we'll flip it on over remember we heated this up the, the... alexa stop this pan very hot no handle. It's very easy when you get going to just want to grab, okay? Safety first. Get that over there. We've got the pan oiled up as well. We don't want any sticking, but let's go ahead and throw this over to stove cam real quick. And don't forget, check the oven. Yes, and we're going to check the oven here momentarily. Thank you, Jen, keeping me on track as always. That's what love is, kids. Check out this pan. It's actually by Nordicware. Uh, and it's got raised grill marks in there. So this is going to be really fun to do uh, a grilled cheese type sandwich on this. All right, let's check the oven, see how we're looking here. Cheese is looking good. I'm going to give it that full 10 minutes here. Alexa, set timer for a minute and 47 and a half seconds. Oh, my goodness. One minute and 47 seconds. It didn't give me the half. I always wanted to try that. We did it live. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead. Start multitasking, all right? We're going to get our bacon down here. Just like so. And I did this in a different building order, which doesn't really matter. But I'm still going to drop a little bit of that Mountain Magic seasoning in there. I'm going to come back, drop a little bit of that basil.
and line up our sandwich, mayo side out, okay? And we're about ready to get this in the pan here. I'm just gonna wave my hand over the top there. That's doing good. It's all gonna go in the composter. Let's clear some things. Keeping a neat workspace, also helpful, right? And we are gonna need our garnish here as well. So before I get that in the pan, let's go ahead, take our flat uh, Italian leaf parsley here. Let's get our garnish ready to go. So when we're ready to plate, all of our ducks are in a row. Also, compost. Did you take a peek? Don't forget. I did, I did. How's it looking? It's pretty much like it was conspired by angels. Oh, okay. I don't want to oversell it, but I don't want to undersell it. Oh my gosh. You know? <laughs> there we go. Some lovely flat leaf parsley that we're just going to rough, rough chop down to give a little nice green freshness pop to the end. This being that all of our produce and everything, onions, tomatoes, all that's going to come out warm. We got a little fresh pop to it there. If you want to garnish, if you're from the North Country and you know what a Perkins is, we've got a little leaf we can put on the plate there, just like Perkins restaurants. No. No, 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 Chef Ramsay would lose his mind. Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. Thank you. All right, let's get a trivet out. <laughs> Move this knife out of the way. Hopefully we didn't set off a bunch of people's What's Alexa. What's that? Hopefully we didn't set off a bunch of Alexas in other people's houses. I'm sure we did. We that. usually do. <laughs> Sorry if we did. And there we've got beautiful melted cheese. If you want, you can pop this under the broiler too. If you want to get a little bit more crispier, uh, touch to your tomatoes and stuff. Should we do that? That cheese is looking really nice. Tell me what you think. I can't see. Well, come on up and see. Right there, cheese is melted. Everything is gelling together really nicely here. No, it looks good. You good? Yeah. Okay. Let's do, Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and I'm going to cut it right on the board here with our serrated blade and then plate it up for you. Drizzle. Yeah, I'm going to drizzle. I'm going to drizzle, lady. Don't you fret. Don't you fret. There we go. Beautiful. Onto the board. Very hot. Safety first, kids. And then we're going to cut uh, on a slight diagonal here. There we go. That'll work. Oh, didn't quite make it through. Just moving the bacon off. I appreciate that. Thank you, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Cheesy goodness. We're going to just rest that right on top of the other one there. Little angle action. Ooh, that looks yummy. Doesn't that look yummy? Yeah. Doesn't that look yummy and easy, right? Okay. Now, let's sauce it up here. I'm going to get this the right way. We're going to use our steak sauce here. High white and handsome steak sauce, which isn't just for steak, okay? Amazing on vegetables. So I'm going to do a nice... Little drizzle here. It's a good finishing sauce on a lot of things. On so many things. burgers, on mushrooms, bacon, on brisket, mushrooms. Yes. Look at that beautiful little drizzle. Let's come over with a little of the Italian leaf parsley. I just want the nice. That looks delicious. Well, thank you. I'm going to lift this up for you all to see. Look at that. Now tell me that's not a perfect feel good tomato cheese and bacon for a winter's day. Mm -mm. All right. Let's snap a quick picture here because it looks really good and then you can eat it. I cannot wait. Let's get a nice quick picture.
You're looking lovely. All right, sweetheart, come on. While it's warm. Time to taste. Time to taste. Mmm, that looks great. Yes, and the green plate for sure. Yes, the green plate for the win. All right, open face sandwich. Got to eat with a fork, right? Yes, I would eat that with would a fork. Would you like to try? Go ahead, because I'm actually going to start uh, back here. Well, Jen is tasting that. We'll flip it over. There's our pan. Let's go ahead and get our other sandwich in the pan here. Oh, listen to that sizzle, kids. Hot pan. Now, we want that cheese to melt as mm. well. What do you think? Mm -hmm. You loving it? Mm -hmm. Good. How easy is that? Very good. We're going to take our dome there. And put it right on top, as you see in the bottom there, because that's going to help that cheese mm. melt. You want a bite? I'd love a bite. Okay. I like the sourdough with it. I like that cheddar cheese, all of it. Really good. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be a messy bite. I that's think. all right. <laughs> well, yep, I dropped a piece. Pushing it like a... <laughs> really good. Really good. All right. Let's click this over the stove cam. There we go. So we're at uh, about 50 minutes on the show today. So if you're not talking about different things and doing that, you could bust these sandwiches out for brunch, for lunch, mm -hmm. a light dinner, easily in about 20 to 25 minutes, probably tops. How quick, how delicious, layers of flavor in no time at all. It's also very budget friendly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That seasoned bacon is amazing. It's really good. We got the lid on to help this in the oven. You've got convection style cooking with airflow on the stove top. You don't necessarily have that. Uh, hopefully our pan isn't too hot. We've got it on a medium low heat, but this electric burner does. So this is going to be a little bit of a test here, but you know what? You got to have some fun. You got to try some new things out here. Uh, so let's see what happens. Okay. I'm going to take a little peek here. A little peek here. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, we got some color. We got some color. Needed a needed another moment. Maybe I can flip it back over and get the cross hatch going there. But just on those edges. Just on those edges. We're doing all right though. Let's go ahead, put that, that lid back on there. That's the one difficulty, uh, getting it edge to edge when your bread is, you know, we're looking at about eight inches long on these slices of bread, you know. So with the mayo and stuff, you can press it with your hand or whatever uh, when we're cooking like outside. Remember, we usually cook a lot of things outside. But underneath that snow, somewhere there in the middle is where we uh, cook on our griddle. And uh, so if we're doing burgers or uh, these type of sandwiches out there, which we do a lot of grilled cheese, we do Asian food, all kinds of different stuff on our griddle. But in order to get that edge to edge, I actually use a press, uh, kind of like a panini press or a sandwich press or a burger press to make sure that you get that even nice sear all the way across. We just decided to bust out this pan today uh, to do something just a little bit different and see, you know, play around with it a little bit because why not? Why not? No time like the present. Uh, but yeah, once again, coming to you from the top of the Ozark Mountains. Usually you can see the the other ridge, mountain ridge in, in the distance there, but we've got, you know, inclement weather uh, in the area here. And our sign is hidden inside Yeah, that and we box. actually have a sign so inside that box. So if you're wondering what's in that box, that is what's in the box. All right, so just moments away here. I'm just gonna grab out a regular plate for this one. Since Jen ran off with the special show plate. <laughs> and we're gonna bust this out here in just a moment. We're gonna take a little peek. Remember, every time you lift the lid, it's just like barbecuing. Every time you lift the lead, uh, you're letting all the residual heat out. It, st it essentially stops the cooking process, except for on the searing surface. Uh, that's a big rule in barbecue. If you're looking, you're not cooking. Uh, same sort of thing here when we're trying to melt cheese and all that. You're you're hindering the time in the process. So if you're if you're working to get this done, 
you're going to let all that heat out. But we're getting some nice melt there. We're getting some nice melt. Let's take a little peek here. Let's take a little peek. Oh, yeah. I'm going to... We've got pretty good cheese melt there, so I'm going to just try to do a quick finish here. This We're getting the, the waviness with the size in the pan. And we're going to press that down, kind of do a, a pseudo panini, see if we can get that just to finish off on those edges real quickly. Either way, I'm going to eat it, and I'm coming out a winner on this deal, so I'm not too worried about it. All right, I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Yeah, I could probably, that's the whole thing. Well, we haven't used that pan in forever, so I'm not too worried about it, but it's still going to be good. Let's go ahead, do a slice here. We'll kick it back over. Clean that up just a little bit there. There we go. Now you can see there where we got the nice, the nice lines there. And I, I just tried to do, I was moving really quick to get that cross hatch, but that's, that's cause that side wasn't sitting flush there. That's why we would press it down. But the good news, and this is very hot, but you can see, I'm going to hold her up. Look at it. We got the melty cheese goodness. Let's have the official taste test. It's hot. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to drizzle a little sauce on that, and we're going to have lunch. All right. There we go. Thank you. Oh, we got something in the chat there. That looks like Montana, says Montana. Yes, that's as close as we get about two times a year to looking like that. Uh, and it'll be gone in like a day. Thank you for being here, Mom, Tana. Uh, and thank you everyone for joining us here on Kitsch as we made tomato cheese dip bacon open faced in the new Montana Max closed face sandwiches here on Montana Max Barbecue TV on Kitsch.com, the food network for the new generation. Uh, feel free, if you're watching right now, check us out on our website where you can get our whole array of sauces and seasonings, three of which we use today. We've got flavors for every meal, all available at www.montanamaxbbq. As well as Facebook, Instagram, and all that kind of fun stuff. I am Montana Max sitting over there enjoying her sandwich like there's no tomorrow is my one and only Kansas City, Jen. And on behalf of both of us, for those about to cook, we sure do. Take care of one another, and we'll be back tomorrow at uh, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time with another fun recipe, make sure to click save my spot so you get that reminder from Kitsch so you don't miss the delicious moment. Thank you, everyone, and we will see you later. Bye!